Fire Hazmat teams from the St. George Fire Department and surrounding communities join together for their annual training at the old airport. Besides training with the St. George Police Department for the first time, they've called in the Utah National Guard's 85th Weapons of Mass Destruction Civil Support Team for assistance. They're getting hands-on training from nationally known professionals in a simulated scenario. This is what they do, you know, on a weekly basis where we do it once a year. So they're very, very skilled. They go throughout the, the nation training, actually throughout the world on trainings and incidents. And so they, they have a lot of experience. So they give us good critiques on how we do. We're here to assist. Uh, we we kind of help classify what the hazard is, help assist with sampling. And we have a mobile laboratory on site, so that's a, a great asset that a lot of communities just don't have. They have to send samples to the state lab and, and it takes longer. An estimated 25 local responders are briefed on the situation. The interagency hazmat teams then begin gearing up for the exercise with rubber boots, hazmat suits and breathing devices. To make this scenario more realistic, they tied it in with the recent incident at Pineview High School where a makeshift explosive device was reported and discovered. In the scenario, the police or SWAT team has already arrested a suspect, and after checking out another location, they found a dangerous drug lab. So the incident is we have a, a suspected um, fentanyl lab, which is you know a, a very potent opiate drug that they could be possibly making in that facility. There's actually two locations. There's a residence, which were um, working with now and then another uh, location which is actually the manufacturing part of the of the scenario but the 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 scenario is that they they have some anti-government people that uh, have mentioned that they had ties with the Pineview incident as well as some some stated ISIS ties which are unconfirmed but are, are possible so that being said we're concerned about you know them putting up a fight or or wanting to to hurt us as, as we try to deal with the fentanyl. So. They slowly enter the building after it's been cleared to determine what kind of hazard they are dealing with. They are assisted and assessed by the 85th support team. Okay, well my team actually um, can assess the, the hazard, so identify uh, what potential is in there. We can collect samples. We can give them a, an idea of whether they're dealing with fentanyl or they're dealing with another substance and, uh, and maybe give them some recommendations on how to handle that how to uh, properly decontaminate um, if they come in contact with fentanyl um, or other substances. After determining what they are dealing with, the hazmat responders go back, sending in a new team. Fentanyl is a dangerous drug that is typically transdermal. It's potentially deadly if the right amount touches the skin. It, it can cause respiratory arrest. Um, it can um, have an opioid type effect, but at a greater level. So when you're, when you're talking about just basic fentanyl, you're talking about 50 to 100 times what morphine is. It's then that they must be properly decontaminated. That's the last thing we want to do is bring something that's dirty into a clean environment and possibly contaminate you know, other responders on the incident as well as, who knows, taking it home to our, to our families. The most important thing is we ever come in contact with that stuff is to get it cleaned off and make sure it's off. The 85th WMD team also helps determine public safety and whether people need to be evacuated. They are highly skilled and are on call at various times nationwide and even worldwide. There's 57 teams like mine in the United States, one in every state and a, and a couple of states have an additional team. Um, the team from Maine expressed some interest in doing a, a joint exercise with us several months ago and so we brought them out here and, and there's about 19 members of the, the Maine civil support team and about the same number from my team. The 85th has helped with trainings here before. They also come to St. George to help support special events like the Ironman and the Marathon. And as for this hazmat training, the men who put their lives in harm's way are grateful for the support, which is free of charge. All it takes is a phone call to activate them and, and it doesn't cost the, the city of St. George or the or the residents, it doesn't cost them anything. It's a, it's a great asset that we were able to to utilize. We know most of these people by first name and it works out great. In St. George, Melissa Anderson, CEC News.